Uh, Biden is obviously going to be carried to his party's nomination in 2020, despite all rumblings and rumors of him being replaced by Harris or facing a serious primary opponent. Should Republicans focus more on who can beat Biden or more on who could reverse more of the current administration's policies? I mean, the GOP is behaving like they already have 2024 in the bag, but the red wave they promised for the midterms didn't work out. Ronald Reagan, in his announcement speech in 1980, famously said that a recession is when your neighbor loses their job. A depression is when you lose yours. And a recovery is when Jimmy Carter loses his. Brilliant line that illustrated the problems that existed in 1980 and placed the blame at Carter's feet. But what Reagan did was explain to the country how cutting spending, balancing the budget, cutting taxes, showing support for traditional family values, backing up a strong American national security establishment that would frighten the Russians and frighten the Chinese into behaving better would create a better world. And this is what Reagan was going to do. Somewhere along the line, the Republican leadership has gotten used to making deals in Washington and not going to the American people to sell them in advance, that this is why this is going to be good for you. They, they, they do it, they do a deal, and then explain what's going to be good about it. So nobody's vested. They're not building a movement. They're not building a party. They're not building support for themselves. Mrs. Prime Minister Thatcher used to say, first you win the argument, then you win the election. The Republicans want to win the election so they can win the argument. Whether, whether, whether Biden is carried in on somebody's shoulders or in a, on a stretcher, he's probably going to be the nominee in 2024 because he is the most, the least objectionable candidate among Democrats. Kamala is a disaster. Gavin Newsom has thrown in with Biden. Bernie is an almost certain loss. Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, yesterday's news, old smelly fish wrapped in paper, ready for the garbage can. And there are no Democrats out there with new ideas, trying new things, who are culturally progressive enough for the coalition that controls the nominating process in the Democratic Party to say this is the replacement for Biden. Now, if Biden dies and Kamala Harris becomes the president, I think you're going to have a free-for-all because even as president, I think she's a weak nominee. But what the Republicans have to do to win in 2024 is what I've, what I've said in our conversation thus far. They need to offer the American people what Newt Gingrich used to call an agenda worth voting for. Mm how they will bring inflation under control, what they will do to spur economic growth, what policies they will enact to help get energy prices down, how they will stop the out of control East and West Coast elites from poisoning the minds of children in public schools, how they will make streets safe. They have to have that program. Ronald Reagan ran on the same core ideas in 1966 when he was elected governor of California that he ran on in 1980 when he became the 40th president of the United States. There has to be a there there. You can't be a cipher. We don't build you as you go along. This isn't, this isn't a Hollywood movie like The Candidate with Robert Redford or Bullworth with Warren Beatty, or any any of the other liberal conceptions of how presidencies and campaigns are made. You have to stand for something. If you don't stand for something, your enemies are going to sit on you. And when you when you when you nominate somebody who is 
in process, you are conceding the battle of ideas. And that is the strongest thing the Republicans have going for them. If you'll notice, the Democrats don't, even, even with Trump, they don't attack Trump's ideas. They attack Trump personally. And by that, I mean, they don't argue about the border being out of control. They don't argue that tax cuts don't spur growth. They don't, they don't have counter, they say Trump has dinner with a neo-Nazi. Trump calls illegal immigrants rapists. Trump uses naughty words and talks about manhandling women. He's a, he's a rotten human being. It's not, it's not the ideas so much, except for the stuff that strays into the area of white supremacy, which, which I don't think Trump endorses, but it, 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 the way he handles it and addresses it when he's called out on it gives me pause, um, that he doesn't understand it and he needs to. The politics of personal destruction that the Democrats are so good in is all about understanding that they can't win the debate over the ideas. Right. They they have to attack Republicans personally. Mm-hmm. That that was leveled at Republicans, you know, for I remember in the nineties with Clinton. It was I, mean, I think it was I think it was Carville. I think they they coined that phrase, the politics of personal destruction. Oh so. no, it goes back before that. But remember Carville was the guy that 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 remember and this is before me too, attacked Paula Corbin Jones. Right. And Monica Lewinsky by saying, well, I guess this is what happens when you drag a hundred dollar bill through a trailer park. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, and the, what is it? The, the slut shaming. That, that yeah, thing. yeah. That's a, yeah. after me too. You can't do that. Yeah. Until the next Democrat gets in trouble with a woman or for reasons involving sex. And then it will all come back because the, the hypocrisy is, is everybody talks about, you know, the, the, the hypocrisy of the, conser- you know, the conservative candidate who paid for his girlfriend's abortion. Oh, hypocrisy, hypocrisy, hypocrisy. You know, what about the Democratic candidate that's getting serviced by campaign, you know, the married Democratic candidate who's getting serviced by campaign workers who are subordinate to them in the hierarchy? That's hypocrisy. But yeah. You know, because you're willing to protect abortion rights and, and, and compulsory unionism, they give you, they cut your break. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with Herschel, I, I always point to, I always say, you know, it's our converts who turn out to sometimes be our, our best spokespersons, you know, yeah. uh, Andrew Breitbart. I mean, there's lots of them. So it's like with Herschel, I'm kind of like, I don't know why people are just so crazy about that, but. Yeah. Nobody's whatever. asked, nobody's asked Reverend Warnick to address the various rumors <laughs> surrounding his personal private behavior and nobody's asked reverend warnick if he's ever paid for a woman's abortion i don't even know i i I think i I, if you're going to make that big a deal out of it as regards herschel walker i think you want at least to pose the question the reverend senator warnick did you ever pay for a woman's abortion i presume the answer is no but they don't even, fairness, not even Fox News will ask this guy if he ran over his wife or not. I mean, it's it's so skewed, you know, to, you know, to um, being all about Herschel. It's just it's puzzling to mm-hmm. me. It's it's you know, it's just the times we live in, I guess.